What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host that needs to go on a, a bar crawl eventually, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here, lady. Seriously, man, I haven't done that and it seems so cool to try at least once. Former boss seems to have forgotten she fired me. What a dummy. So some backstory here because it's important. I used to work for a tech company based in the US, a small startup with a small team. From the interview pitch, it seemed perfect. I get to walk to work, it's in an industry I really like, music, and while the pay is way under my value, I get stock options and good benefits. Within the first month, things are okay. Not amazing, but I'm doing my best to make the most of it. My tech guy is nice and our HR finance guy is chill. The other two... <sighs> Well, the first warning sign is that they fight. Childishly, I might add. If the guy, we'll call him Tim, doesn't know how to do something, he gets flustered and asks for help. First few times I didn't mind it, then realize he was asking me to do all of his work for him. That's not a great sign. Second warning sign, the chick. We'll call her Karen, because she is one, blows up constantly. She also asks me to do her work for her. Did I mention she is the head of the company? I had to help her fill out her own W-2. That should have set alarm bells off, but whatever, she's young. Maybe she's only ever worked on 1099 jobs, I don't know. Then the real issues start to rear their ugly heads. Anytime Tim and Karen disagree, it's a full-scale fight. Neither of them are actually doing their own work, so it's usually down to, well, why isn't this perfect? And whoever is being accused just looks at me while the other goes, I'll do it myself, then gives it back to me with little to no direction. This goes on for months. The fighting only gets worse and worse, and it's bizarre because it's not dissimilar to a lover's quarrel. That's when I realize, that's what it is. These two are dating. They didn't disclose this to anyone. Not to me, not to our staff, who is exhausted listening to them fight, and most shockingly, not to our investors, which is a huge no-no. Eventually, after months, I request to only work with HR guy and tech guy. To their protests, HR guy allows it, seeing that I'm pretty much going to quit otherwise. It starts out... okay. But Karen keeps trying to overload our process with more of the work she's supposed to be doing, still trying to get me to do it. Eventually, they hire... well, he's treated like a glorified intern, to do their crap for them. I hand over our master list of logins to him, delete the logins off my devices since I am not responsible for the channels associated anymore, and get on with my work. Keep this in mind for later. For a brief stint, things are okay. Or at least I think they are, because I don't have to deal with Karen and Tim anymore. But oh man, was I wrong. Out of nowhere, Karen and Tim leave town, inform all of us that we need to move to this new city, and that I'll have to ship their crap to the new place since I'm the only one still in my city. HR guy was on vacation and tech guy is remote. I'm furious. I less than politely say, hell no. Sure enough, I don't have to convince them. Brovid hits. Everyone had to work remote wherever they are now because flights aren't an option. I also refused to move their crap. I finally had had it and started looking for a new position. But with Brovid well underway, I was screwed. It was this or unemployment. Sure enough, Karen starts ignoring processes and begins setting up calls at all hours that aren't productive and just waste time. For me, these calls are sometimes as late as 10 p.m. It's a mess. The final straw was when Karen and Tim angrily called me to request I do something, start fighting, forget I'm still on the phone, and start cussing each other out. I just sit there incredibly uncomfortably while they yell at each other. And out of nowhere, Tim calls her his future wife. 
Like, what the fuck, guys? Hang up! Now, I could have hung up, but since I was friends with the other staff, I relay what I've overheard, and they inform me that they had no idea, and that's a big yikes. This even gets back to one of the investors who freaks. The big check stopped coming in. I wonder why. As Brovid rages on, the company just burns through money. I can tell that things are going downhill and brace for impact. Sure enough, I get terminated. Everyone does. Now, fast forward to today. Out of nowhere, I get a call from Tim. They've misplaced several logins for their account. I direct them to the intern, and apparently he doesn't have them. I help them recover the logins, because I'm not an ass, and Karen, learning nothing, asks if I can help with a project for free. I don't think I've ever been more happy to say, I don't work here, lady, in my life. Just to add some revenge salt, I give them my contractor rates, $50 an hour. I haven't heard back, but if I do, I'll update in the comments. I may not work anywhere right now, but God am I glad I don't work in that hellhole anymore. Wow, okay, so, um, those people obviously don't really have much in terms of knowledge of how to run a business. I mean, I don't either, but... <laughs> I mean, if you're about to start running one, you should probably, like, uh, read up, maybe? Alright, this story's called... Entitled Parent Believes I Work Here and Gets Angry at My Inappropriate Pins on My Lanyard. This was the first I've encountered an entitled parent, just because I'm a furry. But I don't know how this post should be, it's an entitled parent, plus I don't work here, lady combined. Here's the cast... Entitled Raging Karen! Entitled Dad! Me? Employee. Elderly lady. My hero. Scene. So I, a 26-year-old guy, got out of work not long ago and decided to get a few things on my list at Walmart. I stopped at Walmart and browsed the aisles. Halfway through my list, I heard someone behind me saying if I can't help them. I turned around and there behold, entitled mother, a late 20s Karen, with her entitled husband or it's entitled dad, but it's her husband, I'm assuming, looks somewhere around his mid-40s. Sorry, I don't work here. Without hesitation, the entitled mother scoffed and said, Sure you do. You have the uniform on and you're going through the aisle stalking, so don't waste my time with the I don't work here speech because it's not gonna work on me. The entitled dad is shaking his head in agreement, and entitled mother continues with entitled mother's rant. We are trying to find this toy that the Walmart app said they have in stock. She showed me the toy on her phone and proceeds the rant, but what she doesn't know is that her app is in a different state. And and I mentioned it to her, but Entitled Mother is so stubborn and said, No, the app said it's here and it's in stock. I want to get this for my precious child. Kid sitting in the cart. Entitled Mother's voice echoed for what seemed like forever. An employee showed up because of the commotion that's being unfolded. Entitled Dad complained to the employee that I was of no help and refuses to find their toy. Entitled Mother showed the employee the app with the toy and a few minutes later, the employee collected himself and figured out what is happening. The employee first told them that I don't work there, and second, that the toy isn't in stock in this store. Entitled Mother was fuming and said something along the lines of, The app said it is in stock, so don't mess with me! And secondly, this guy does work here! See? As soon as she said that, she reached for my lanyard, pulling it as it felt that I was being choked. He has your employee tag! The employee said, Ma'am, that is not our employee tag. He works for a different company. She turned to look at the tag. She was getting more red by the second when she realized that I don't work there. Entitled mother and erectile dysfunction retreat in defeat, and the employee sighed a sigh of relief and apologized to me. I thanked him and went to finish my list. I wish I can say that was the end of it, but nope, it got worse. As I waited at the checkout, the line was pretty long. Out of nowhere, I felt a huge pull on my lanyard and made me choke and gag for air. Seconds later, I regained my breath and faced whoever pulled my lanyard so hard. Without surprise, I noticed it is Entitled Mother and Entitled Dad. Before I can utter a word, Entitled Mother said, 
You should go to hell, you furry lover! And points at my lanyard that has furry pins and some of my fursona pins. Turns out she saw the pins when she tried to show the employee that I work there. You should just die so you won't corrupt my son with your furry. A video of the adult variety crap. I told them that being a furry is not horrible. Yes, it is. And it helps a lot of people and charity. So what? People in line and the next are watching the scene being unfolded. All furry is all about is sex with an animal and for bad people who have no life whatsoever. No, we don't. People always look to the bad side and spread horrible rumors about furries. Um, furry, I guess. And they are so stubborn to not even look at the good things we furry have. Have done furries before i can continue entitled mother yanked the lanyard off my neck tossed it to the ground and stomped on it entitled dad joined in as well as people around are shell-shocked with what is going on i'm not a violent person and not well body built but boy was i pissed and wanted to knock both of them out luckily an elderly lady snatched my lanyard off the ground Entitled Dad and Entitled Mom both looked at her and said, Drop that tainted crap! It's inappropriate and should be burned so no kids can look at it and get any ideas about furry! All they need to know is what the internet says about them. Elderly lady handed my broken pins and lanyard and stood between both me and them. Entitled dad isn't having it and started yelling and entitled mother started talking to other people about how bad the furry fandom is and that we should stay away from them. Gladly, the security came and I finally got through the checkout just before I can even leave. One last surprise stuck me hard in the back of the head. I almost fell and took a second for my eyes to focus. Then I noticed there's a large... Oh my god. <laughs> there's a large can of beans on the ground almost next to... Oh my god. Everyone is silent and mouths gaped open trying to process what just happened. Turns out, <laughs> Entitled Mother tossed the can of beans at me before disappearing out of the store. I touched where the area of the bean impact... <laughs> Oh my god, this has to be a joke. Bean impact. I am bleeding, oh my gosh. It didn't take long for the ambulance and police to gather. I gave my statement as so the others that have witnessed the event, entitled mother and entitled dad are nowhere to be found as they took off in a hurry. I'm okay and my head still hurts. I'll give updates on if they ever found the two. Who the hell would go this length just because I'm a furry? Being a furry is not horrible and we have daily lives like everyone else. And no, we do not have sex with animals. That is just ridiculous and sick. It's funny how people can just see what the internet has to give and only see the horrible side of the furry fandom and assume it's fact and not experience the good things first-handed. A lot of the bad things that people say about furries are just rumors that won't stop and continue to spread and it ruins people's lives to the point in driving to commit, uh, do sad things because of the haters and the haters encourage it. I know most haters are adults and we can't really do much from that but block them. But there are children ages 8 to 16 as well promoting these hate and uh, sad thing. I just wish parents will see what they're doing and put a stop to it. But we can dream. Even if someone stops being a furry, it will still continue. We chose to be furries because we love to express how we are. Very similar to Kai cosplay and other different types of conventions and including Star Wars. Mmm, no. We stick together and help one another, especially for those who are attempting to commit a uh, sad thing because of haters. We help charity, hospitals for children to be cheered up, conventions that non-furry people can experience. We also have furry children as well, and the non-furry parents are proud of it. Sorry about the rant, just things happen and I'm just fuming from the event, but seriously, we know it's not all rainbows and butterflies. No one can escape the hate. It's life. But hopefully we can reduce the hater population by helping them see the good side of the furry and not fixated on the horrible side. Okay, so I'm getting from this is that furries are weird and they are very bad people and they like animals inappropriately. That's that's the message I'm getting from this. I'm sorry, buddy, but that's just what I'm getting from this. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm, of course, joking. Do what you want, as long as it's not hurting other people. Um, OP in this story did absolutely nothing wrong. He just vibing. He's just doing his thing. And you know what? I think furry stuff is weird, bro. It's just weird to me. But I'm never gonna seriously condemn someone just because they're a furry. And no one else should. It's just someone doing their thing. Um, even if it is really weird. All right, this story's called... Lady decides I need to help her and her son load a dresser because I'm parked two spots away from them. So today, I'm at Costco getting my meds, minding my own business. A lady and her son bought one of the dressers that Costco was selling. Fine, all good. They actually look pretty good. Mom decides that the two of them can get it in the car and refuses help despite the two of them basically being the living embodiment of sticks. I mean, anything's possible, right? We all made it out through the queue to get outside and are about 8 to 10 steps behind me. Mom and son are bickering because son knows she's not strong enough to lift aside. Mom won't have it. I get closer to my car, only to find a young family struggling with a little two-year-old refusing to go in its seat. Inconvenient, given it's 95 before the heat reflecting properties of asphalt. But whatever, and I'm not in a rush. Kids will be the monsters they will be. Mom and son try to lift the dresser to no dice and to my immense humor. I've had to deal with her at work before and she isn't the nicest person. Sadly, she recognized me at some point and demands I get over here and help my son load this. I pretend not to hear her and went about watching this child just screw with this dad trying to buckle him in. 10 out of 10 would watch again with popcorn. Mom decides to tap my shoulder to get my attention. Q, help my son load this dresser. Again, no, as my answer isn't taken well, and she had a freakout moment. Even so far as to threaten to return the tree she bought from us because I was being rude. Good luck with that, lady. You and your son can't lift a 150-pound dresser. Good luck lifting that 800-pound autumn blaze maple that's now had plenty of time to root in. I finally look at my son and see his obvious shame that his mom is acting a lot like the two-year-old not wanting to go into the car seat. Agree to help the kid so long as mom doesn't touch it because she will tip the box too much. Gotta keep in mind, I'm six foot two with a six foot six wingspan. I know, freaking monkey arms and a bit of a brute from shifting many 300 to 700 pound trees by hand. We lift the dresser into the truck bed without too much issue, despite the fact I took about all the weight. Mom then decided I need to follow them home to offload the dresser. Hell no, lady. Hell no. It was a big enough of an I don't work your lady moment to even load the thing, let alone ending back up at your house to offload it. The dad finally managed to get the baby buckled up and I hopped in my car and drove off. Ended up that she called my job to complain that I was rude and not helpful. Sales staff know that I'm off on Mondays, my only day off after all, and ask what about? Lady, I guess, decided to admit she was trying to bully me into helping her and it got laughed off. Can't wait to see what comes of this. Cheers, mad lads and mad lasses dealing with I don't work your lady issues. Edit 1. I'm aware I shouldn't have caved and helped her, but at the time, it seems like a good thing to help the kid with her. I have one of these entitled witches as a stepmother. Kind of hard for me not to sympathize. Yeah, you're a good dude for helping the kid. Um, don't punish the, the kid for the sin of the parents or something like that. I really like this story. It was written really well. Um, so thanks for sharing, bro. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.